Okay, and welcome. Um, the purpose of this video is to help you with a couple of things um, that I noticed uh, are common problems. One of them being how to merge flow sheets from different files. Another being how to get different physical properties to work in the same flow sheet without errors. Okay, so what you're looking at is my um, CO2 file that I gave you. And so my suggestion, which I think is ultimately the easiest for everybody, is to start with this file and then build your physical properties package and simulation out from there. Okay, since most of you haven't built a common physical properties package, you can just start from this file. Um, so add chemicals you need to it and so forth. Okay, so first, um, one thing I want to show you, which is interesting, is something called a hierarchy block. Okay, a hierarchy block is very nice because it allows you to group um, a whole bunch of units into one big box. So I'm gonna, it's like a big box on a block flow diagram. So I'm gonna, diagram. So I'm gonna call this CO2 removal section. Uh, let's try that one. Okay, and so what I can do is I can highlight and right click. So I can have a bunch of uh, units in one section. I'm gonna say move selection and I'm going to move it to this hierarchy block that I just created. Okay? And in so doing, it picks it up, and now it's gone, but it's inside there. So if I double-click this, go into my main flow sheet, you'll see I'm in the CO2 removal section of that flow sheet. Okay? Um, and so here it is, and for example, if I go back to the main flow sheets there, I can go back in. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. You can see it wants me to, to run it again, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. should just take a second. Although with Aspen, you never know, right? Okay, so it's going to do its thing, and then um, there you go. It's all done. All right, and just to verify that I have Electrolyte NRTL by default, you can always check in any of the blocks, and you see, okay, I have Electrolyte, Ener and electrolyte NRTL for that block. Okay, so back in the main flow sheet, okay, I'm going to create another hierarchy, and I'm going to call this one my reformer section. Okay, so what I can do is inside this section, I can add more blocks. So I'm just going to give a demo block. Um, we'll just do a, a boring old heat exchanger. Okay, and so I'm going to put some stuff in there. Um, something. The name doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to demonstrate. Okay, so I'm just going to heat something up to 50C, and I'll have no pressure drop, and then... Uh, uh, if we go back here, okay, I'll put in something. Oh, I don't really care what. Uh, let's do it. Uh, yeah, let's do a bunch of water and uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so if I run this block now, okay, if I run this whole thing, if I go in here, I'll see results for this one. Okay, and it's completely separate. Okay, so that's really cool. And if you're wondering, I can take streams from this one and connect it to that one. So for example, if I want, I can have either a new outlet stream or I can have the outlet from my heat exchanger come out and I want to connect it to some stream in my input. So for example, do I want this to be our makeup stream, um, our sweet sin gas stream, or a new stream? So I'm going to pick new in this case. Okay, and I'll call it um, from reformer or something. Okay, and then what you can do is you can go into from ref uh, in the CO2 removal, and there's my from reformer. I could then pick this up and dump it into one of these things. I don't really need to, but I can run this flow sheet, for example, and then now I have, oh, great. Um, <laughs> let's see, what did I do? Um, CO2 removal dot temp one. Temp one. All right, it's probably upset because I didn't connect this to anything. Let me um, let me give it something to do. Thank you. Okay. I assume you name everything the same way I do. Okay, let's try that again. It's probably upset. Now why is it incomplete? Goodness sakes. Uh, fine. I'm just doing things so that it'll converge. I did not expect to have to do this. Sorry doesn't like hanging streams like that. Okay, so we'll do it that way. Why is it still incomplete? If you don't know what's incomplete, you can always hit next. Oh, my mixer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my heater. That's right. I never did anything. 
Um, we'll have it be a do nothing. Okay, there we go. So I guess I didn't really need to do that. Um, yeah, that's my fault. Okay, anyway, you can bring streams in and out from your flow sheets that way. Um, now what's really cool is you can use this same feature to change your physical properties. Okay, and this is where it can get a little tricky. Um, so, okay, now everything's working. So I'm going to close all this stuff out here. Okay, go back to our control main section. Let's close everything out. Okay, if we look up here in our main thing here, um, you'll see our block section actually only has two blocks. Okay, we have C CO2 removal and reformer, and it's inside the CO2 removal that I have another blocks tab that has the blocks that I had before. Okay, so you can get to things that way, but because it kind of treats this as one big block, um, one thing that I can do is in my methods, I can go directly to the reformer methods, and now I can change the physical property parameters that I want for that particular hierarchy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is because I haven't added any new ones yet in my properties, I'm going to go over here um, and I'm going to add um, in my methods here, I'm just going to add one more method. Um, uh, maybe I shouldn't do it that way, I'll do it this way. I don't like doing it this way, um, but I will. Okay, so I'm going to add PSRK. So I'm changing my default method now from Electrolyte NRTL to PSRK. Okay, and then when you do this, this is you don't want anything there, you don't want anything there, and you want true components. So this is how you would normally do it. Okay, so just like before, I have to go find my parameters. There they are. And if you want to know if you have enough data, I can just hit run while I'm in this tab. So it's only going to run the properties, and as long as I don't get an error, I should be good. Yep. Okay. Great. So now I have all these properties. You can see all the binary interaction parameters for PSRK. And so now what I have is my default methods are set to PSRK. So everything from now on will be PSRK that I make. Um, but I have Electrolyte NRTL still stored. So if I go back to my simulation um, in my main flow sheet, okay, so now you'll see that this is set to um, PSRK, which is fine. And if, you can always check the individual blocks by going to block options just to make sure it worked. Now, the problem is, is that all of my CO2 stuff has now been set to PSRK, which I don't want. Okay, so what I can do is I can change them all by changing the CO2 removal um, methods. And I can change this one back to electrolyte NRTL, which I have to find it in this one. Let's see. Right there. Okay, and I need the globals for these. And I need, um, I don't want true components. All right, I'll just take a quick minute to tell you what all this stuff means. Um, Henry components and the electrolytes um, have to do with how activity coefficients are handled. Um, basically, if you don't, it, the, they're put there by default when you first do it in the property section. Um, obviously, for electrolyte calculations, you only want it for electrolyte NRTL. True and apparent components are a little complicated to understand. Um, true components means every time you have like ions and electrolytes, it actually models them as a separate chemical. Um, whereas when you have apparent components, um, it only spits out the um, uh, the sort of bulk chemical. So, for example, for electrolytes, not only do I have water, but I have H3O plus. Okay, and if I use true components, I would have streams with a small amount of H3O plus in it. We really don't want that. We really just want the water part. So when you have apparent components, that's what it'll spit out. Okay, in any case, this is what you want. Um, that's probably more than you need to know right now. So now if I go check, okay, if I check in any particular block, this should be electrolyte NRTL. Yep, and if I go back to my reformer, if I check any old block on the inside, this should be PSRK. All right, so now you can see how you can change all of them together. All right, let's run it and see what happens. Uh, there it goes. Well, it's working. Hopefully it's going to converge. Um, it should. I say this holding my breath. Okay, it worked. All right, and now this might be a good time to reconcile your streams. Um, I, I tend to do this once in a while when I've got like a hard convergence that finally worked. 
Okay, and there you go. Um, now, I have successfully taken information from one model, right, and they're grouped very nicely. And this is this is kind of nice. Um, another thing you can do, like let's say you're going to import from another file. Um, okay, I'm just going to pick one. This is from a student that sent it to me. Um, I actually have not even tried it. Let's just try it. Oops, sorry. Hold on a minute. That's what I saw. File, import. Uh, import into t hierarchy talk level. Okay, so here you go. This is where if you want to import a file and put it into its own hierarchy block, you can put it there, you can put it somewhere else. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new one, call it like, I don't know, and I'm going to file import into there and see what happens. And I'm not going to take this video much farther than that. Um, I'll put it here, and that way it should all come in. Um, yeah, now I haven't tested this out. This isn't going to work because this particular file I'm taking has the wrong um, chemicals. The names are all different. Okay, so it's telling me I already have a CO. That's fine. I can ignore that. Um, I already have some unit sets. Okay, so this is all right, actually. Um, but you'll get these kind of messages like uh, CO is a conflict. So I have CO defined in the other file or that person does, and I have CO defined in my own file. So it's saying I have two COs, what should I do? You say ignore it, they're the same ones. Use what I have now. Okay, they're bringing in PSRK. Do you want me to bring in PSRK? I'll say no, I've already got it set up. Uh, they have a special unit set. Do you want me to bring in that? I say no, ignore that. Okay, so if I do that, okay, this should show up here. Okay, now there's that student's um, work, and I do apologize, I did not get permission from you. We'll keep it nice and tiny so you can't see it. Um, but here you go. And so now what you can do is this section should be in the, the default units, which we said was PSRK. Um, now this one, that person, okay, that group used a different thing. All right, which I'm glad I picked it because what I can, I can immediately now change the entire specifications to the one that I do want, which is the uh, PSRK. Okay, and then now it's all changed. Um, I'm not going to run it because I don't think this one actually works. I'll hit the button and see what happens, but I don't think it's going to work with the new method. I don't expect it, but it's running. Okay, and then you can um, kind of mess with it and play it that way. All right, so it's, yeah, hey, it worked. Okay, so we have results. So now, there you go, I've imported stuff. Um, if you can do it this way, great. But a lot of you might find it easier just to add it in from scratch, um, depending on the size of your, your system. Okay, so that's it. Um, good luck, and I think you'll do a great deliverable three.